What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great Friday. We have some more news on the Michael Irving situation we've been following along with this case uh quite quite frankly uh trying to be as impartial as possible and bring you the details of what's going on so we all know that on march 7th that marriott was ordered to give over the tape here's what ended up happening we all saw the press conference on wednesday uh, michael irvin uh tearing up and things and the way he described the modern day lynching and so on his uh, attorney, Levi, described having to view the tape only, not be able to touch it, not be able to record it, not be able to take a copy of it, just be able to look at it and unable to do anything else with it. Allegedly, three of his attorneys, excuse me, three of them showed up for this. Michael Irving was not there. They, Marriott states, because there was an emergency hearing today. At 2 o'clock today, an emergency hearing on this, at this literally rocket docket, as they call it, um, for the tape, Michael Irving's people filed a, basically an order saying, judge, they, they're bullshitting. They really didn't let us actually have the tape. The interesting part on this is when you start hearing what Marriott's attorneys said, you know, they seemed very cordial. Levi, it was great to meet you and stuff. And we followed by, you know, the rules of what we said we were going to do as far as the tape goes. You know, we stated that we would show you the tape. You would not be able to record the tape. You'd not be able to remove the tape. We've done what we said we would do. The question is, is that what the judge is going to verify and say that's okay with it? Their cases, or Marriott, and this is where it's kind of interesting because the attorneys keep referring back to, I need to talk to my clients and see if we can actually turn over a copy of the tape to you. Their contention is they want to keep the privacy of the witness secret. They worry about people going after her and you know her and amenity and all that um although you have the right to face your accuser i, I at least i thought and i thought you had the right to understand what you're being accused of I, that, that's what i thought the way it worked in the court system and i understand that you know there is a lot of people following this and there would be a lot of outrage as there already has with marriott but what Marriott could do, and basically what they should do, is blur the witness. See, Michael Irvin's people are asking for copies of the tape, so that way they can do, use the tape, show the tape, view the tape, use it to prepare for litigation, because this is a defamation case. They have gone through and they have destroyed the credibility, the career, the livelihood of Michael Irvin. It's his attorney's job to prove that they're wrong and to make him whole. And they can't do that when the only witness is unbeknownst. They can't talk to this witness. They can't even see the tape to take it back and analyze it other than them seeing it in a room with the opposition's attorneys. So they're going to the court and saying, look, judge, we can't do our case with what we're getting from Marriott. The judge will end up ruling whether or not Marriott has to physically turn over the tape. Probably what may happen, and again, I'm not an attorney. I'm not an attorney. I'm not playing one on here, but I'm going through here as a common sense person and what I do know and so on um, legally. What probably will happen is the judge will grant because everything has gone Michael Irving's way thus far. Everything has gone Michael Irving's way thus far. And it seems like uh, Marriott, you would think that this was the Hope Diamond, that they don't, you know, we can't let this be out of our sight, that this is literally gold. To me, it says that this tape is not incriminating against Michael Irving. It's more incriminating against Marriott, and they don't want the backlash of seeing this tape out for the public to see but what i think may happen 
or is possible to happen is that the judge orders them to turn over a copy of the tape to them, possibly with the image blurred of the other individual and probably a copy that they can use for themselves for preparing for court that wouldn't be done and orders them not to distribute the full tape. That would be the fair thing to do as far as this case goes. That way you're keeping that person's identity anonymous, but you're also allowing them to get their hands on the evidence that is in this case. Um, it still amazes me how quickly this whole thing has gone through. And if you haven't been following along, this is just since the week before the Super Bowl, where Michael Irving, um, who does have three witnesses that went to Arizona for taping for the NFL and uh, NFL and NFL Network um, coverage, came back to the hotel, said he had a couple of drinks, uh, saw some people in the bar. They wanted pictures, went outside of the bar because he said taking pictures in the bar is not a good look. Talked with them, took some pictures, came in. Um, an employee from Marriott had a minute, minute and a half long conversation with them that was seen on surveillance tape, and the tape is what's in question here. Uh, the witnesses say he saw him shake Michael Irvin's hand. I mean, Michael Irvin shaked her hand to start, shaked her hand when he finished. And somewhere in between there, <clears throat> something by this employee says happened to this day. We do not have details of it. We do have a, a snippet of a tape of allegedly of this going on from one of the witnesses. And the witnesses saying there didn't seem to be anything that was below board or any mannerisms like somebody was shocked or anything like that. So this is where Michael Irvin was surprised when security came and knocked on his door and said, you have to leave the hotel and proceeded to then contact uh, the NFL network and ESPN where they ended up removing him from coverage. My question is, is this one, um, it was brought up by Mike Farello on Pro Football Talk that NFL Network could also be liable in this because of their basically going through and automatically suspending him. My question is, is this, is that going to be coming if Marriott ends up having to settle this suit or if it goes to court and Michael Irvin wins and now there's proof that he was wronged? Does Michael Irving and his attorneys then turn their sights on the NFL Network and ESPN for basically going along with the allegations without anything to back it up? Which may be the reason why the attorneys for Michael Irvin, along with the tape, want the individuals that were spoken to with the NFL that made the decision to pull him off of air. This thing is going at a lightning pace and it just gets more and more interesting. The thing that still is crazy to me is how hard Marriott, not, not the attorneys that Marriott is the one holding on to this tape and not letting go of it being seen. And in fact, that Marriott who has gone through and said, the case should be thrown out because we are independently owned their franchises. We have nothing to do with that one, but Marriott decided that Michael Irving is no longer welcomed at any of their properties. So Marriott has been throwing a lot of stuff on the wall and this whole thing of the tape being court ordered to be turned over, but was just seen is another one of those games of things that are going on and i'm betting that marriott loses this one as well we'll keep up with this and um we'll let you know if there's more um if they decide on this this happened actually at uh two o'clock central time so we might get a ruling on this today might be on monday and if it is we'll let you know